Imagine having to take multiple drugs that you weren't prescribed without your knowledge given to you in a consistent and continuous supply. Mm -hmm. For humans, such a scenario is hyperbole. For aquatic organisms, such a scenario is reality. In the aquatic environment, pharmaceuticals are considered a new and emerging contaminant. What this specifically means is that they are not traditionally screened for, they do not have established environmental mm -hmm. regulations governing allowable amounts, and traditional ecotoxicological metrics emphasizing lethality as an endpoint do not fully capture the threat that they could pose to aquatic organisms. Pharmaceuticals are a unique contaminant in that they pose a threat at low and sublethal concentrations and can have extreme behavioral and physiological alterations with profound effects at the individual to community levels of organization. The threat pharmaceuticals as an environmental contaminant will only increase as the population grows and drug use rates climb. On average, an American consumes 18 30-day prescriptions annually for a total of over 5 billion prescriptions, and prescription rates increase year after year. Traditional wastewater treatment does not remove pharmaceuticals and the continued use of septic systems all compound the threat that they pose. Relatively new field of research, the majority of studies examine a limited and small number of pharmaceutical contaminants on a small spatial scale, primarily focusing on riverine and freshwater environments. The effects of pharmaceuticals to fish in the marine environment on a large spatial scale is an immediate research need and one that I aim to address in this present study. This study examines pharmaceutical contaminants in a nearshore recreational sport fish found throughout the Caribbean basin, bonefish. Now, bonefish are of particular interest here in that they exhibit a high degree of site fidelity and their habitat consists of nearshore environments closest to presumed inputs of effluent and pharmaceutical contaminants. They are a great marine focal species to examine spatial trends in pharmaceutical exposure and truly represent the pharmaceutical exposure unique to their location of capture. This study examines the presence of pharmaceutical contaminants in bonefish on a large spatial scale in an open marine system and we are testing for 95 different types of pharmaceuticals across numerous drug classes. Preliminary results show that there are higher incidences of pharmaceuticals in bonefish from South Florida relative to the Caribbean, and spatial distinctions in the patterns of pharmaceutical quantity per fish are beginning to emerge. Overall, 100% of tested bonefish across all regions had at least one pharmaceutical with an average of five in an individual bonefish and a maximum number of 16 unique pharmaceuticals found in a fish from Key West. The selected figure shows standard errors for number of pharmaceuticals in individual fish and the bars show the minimum and maximum number of pharmaceuticals in an individual fish from that region. With additional sample analysis, we will ultimately be able to determine spatial trends in types of pharmaceuticals detected and their relative concentrations and quantities, and in turn, inform meaningful management addressing the threat of contaminants and the threat that they play to marine organisms.